Hey Toyota, Untamed here. Today I'm going to provide you with a little bit of feedback. A little bit of feedback from a Toyota enthusiast, someone who has loved the brand, loved the vehicles that you produce for the last several years, right? 2017 I bought my first Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro and I fell in love with the brand. I fell in love with the brand for so many reasons, which ultimately led to me buying many, many more Toyotas. I'm talking a couple dozen more Toyotas since then. I love the brand and I love what you guys stand for. However, I'm seeing some recent changes that I don't love, and I know a lot of people agree with me on this. So in today's video, I'm gonna highlight what those differences and changes are, and what I really think, and what I encourage you at Toyota Corporate to consider doing as we move forward. You're gonna to continue to be a wildly successful vehicle manufacturer, of course you are, but you're gonna lose a lot of people. You're gonna lose your diehard enthusiasts who have followed, followed the brand throughout their lives you're gonna lose them. And I'm confident in saying that. But you're gonna bring on a bunch of new people, of course, and you'll continue to make sales, but at what cost? You're distancing yourself from your original core values, and I'm confident in saying that. I'm not just saying that as a Toyota enthusiast, I am saying that as a doctorate of organizational psychology. I see what you've done, and I see the direction you're going, and I don't love it. And I think some changes need to take place if you wanna keep a hold of your original Toyota enthusiast. So stick with me. Before diving into those changes, I would want to start with your management of your dealerships here in the U.S. During the pandemic in particular, we saw it with nearly every vehicle manufacturer, so it's not just you, but I would confidently say that the majority of your dealerships here in the U.S. took advantage of people. They took advantage of your loyal customers and ruined brand loyalty, absolutely. I can confidently tell you that. We have so many people who peeled off Toyota during the pandemic due to the greedy sales tactics of your dealers here in the US. I understand you don't have full control over that. You know, they're independently owned franchises, I get that. But what you do have control over is the allocation rates that you offer to these dealerships. If you're seeing negative feedback come in on them and they're charging markups and ruining your brand loyalty, don't reward them. Don't reward them with more allocations for TRD Pros, more Land Cruisers. Don't do that. You know, cut those allocations and do not reward them. At least you could do that. So moving forward, we're still seeing a lot of your dealerships here in the U.S. deploy those greedy tactics. Even still, the pandemic's over and they're still charging $10,000, $20,000 over sticker for the brand new Land Cruiser. And I'm sure we're going to see it here in a second when the Tacoma, Tacoma TRD Pro starts to hit. They're going to continuously deploy those tactics. So please try to manage them a little bit better and don't reward those behaviors because ultimately you're losing customers because of it. And how about we bring that sound back? You know, getting rid of the V8 was a pretty bad misstep with the Toyota Tundra and Sequoia lineup. Right? I mean, I think perhaps it would have been wiser to at least leave it as an option. Leave it as an option as you bring on the new iForce and iForce Max, right? The, the twin turbo V6 and the twin turbo V6 hybrid. At least have left it as an option. You could have seen how well the V8 would have sold by comparison in the same exact generation Tundra and Sequoia. But instead, we got rid of it totally and well, look at the Tundra sales right now. They're not doing so good and people are not interested in that platform right now. A lot of people who buy full-size pickup trucks, they want reliability. They want that great peace of mind. And well, when you slap a turbocharged V6 in a full-size pickup truck and slap a battery underneath it, you know, that doesn't inspire a whole lot of confidence, I'm afraid. And let's face it, Toyota, it doesn't take a PhD to learn of how much CO2 emitting fossil fuels are burnt and exhausted in the mining and creation of the battery packs that we're using in our hybrid platforms now. Seems a little counterintuitive if you ask me. Not to mention, when you dispose of those hybrid battery packs, what does that look like? And don't get me started on the price hikes, right? So behind me is my 2021 Toyota Tundra TRD Pro. I don't need to tell you this, but for people watching, MSRP on this back in 2021 was $54,000. $54,000 for a naturally aspirated V8 full-size pickup truck, exceptional reliability, looks stellar, and now, the current generation 2024 Tundra TRD Pro, the same truck, same nameplate, same trim, $23,000 more. You're looking at $76,000, $77,000 if you're going to buy a brand new 24 Tundra TRD Pro. The following year, when the new generation came out in 2022, they upped that price tag $16,000 or $17,000, bumping it up to $70,000, grand after delivery. That is such a huge price jump, right? What gives? And yeah, yeah, I get it. Everybody was affected by inflation, right? All vehicle manufacturers saw a pretty substantial MSRP price hikes across the board. On average, 36% higher since 2019. So I get it. You're not alone, Toyota. However, 
the rub or the frustration with me lies with, you know, we just moved the Toyota Tacoma entirely over to Mexico for production, where labor down there is pennies on the dollar compared to what it is here in America. Call me a proud American all you want, but if we're going to move jobs away from Americans to Mexico, and where you pay a lot less for that labor, why are you spiking up the prices of the Tacoma substantially over the previous generation? That doesn't seem right with me. And it should come as no surprise to you that you have developed such a loyal following, a loyal following of enthusiasts who really appreciate what Toyota stands for. And honestly, you've deviated. You've deviated from that because really people have historically purchased their brand new Toyota pickup truck for, for, I would say, four reasons, right? So number one, exceptional reliability. It's simplicity, great resale, and phenomenal off-road performance, right? And all those four reasons kind of played on each other. And because of that, you developed a very loyal fan base. What are we looking at now? We're looking at you lessening the quality of the products, upping the price tag substantially, and you know, it's just out of reach for a lot of people now. You know, your average American doesn't want to go spend $77,000 for the new Tundra. Back in the day, spending between $40,000 and $54,000 made sense, right? And even the Tier D Pro being on that top end, that was a little out of reach for a lot of people even back then. But now we're looking at 77 grand? No thank you. So will you continue to be a wildly wildly successful vehicle manufacturer? Absolutely, right? You know, especially now. You might even see a little bit of an increase in your sales figures moving forward because what have you done? You've really appealed to the non-Toyota enthusiast at this point. You've appealed to the, you know, your average American who wants to buy the latest and greatest flashy tech gizmo featured vehicle. And that is just not what your core values have been, right? You're gonna sell them in abundance, but then they're gonna be throwaway vehicles. Every three to five years, they'll swap out. Something will go wrong with the tech, the hybrid battery, something, something will go wonky with it and it'll break because it isn't a very reliable, simplistic, naturally aspirated platform anymore. It's complex. People won't be able to work on it. And well, instead of working on it and fixing it themselves, what are they gonna do? They're gonna trade it in for that next 2028 model that is gonna be out at the time, right? And that's what GM does. And that's what Ford does, right? They just build these vehicles that aren't made to last where historically you have built vehicles to last. The 200 series Land Cruiser, no kidding, you built that vehicle last 25 plus years with minimal maintenance. You know, but that doesn't really get you too much on your bottom line, right? Of course, you keep loyal customers, but they're not buying new vehicles every three to five years like GM and Ford, right? So they buy a vehicle and they drive it till the wheels fall off because they can, and that's why they do buy Toyotas. They buy Toyotas, so they had the exceptional unmatched peace of mind that they bought the most reliable vehicle that they can be proud of. I think we've gotten away from that. And there's a reason why Cadillac Escalade sales have far surpassed Toyota Land Cruiser sales in the U.S. throughout history. And that's because when your average consumer sits inside of a Cadillac Escalade, you know, they feel as though, you know, they're getting their money's worth with all the additional tech surrounding them, all the additional frills and creature comforts. Yeah, you know, they're not buying that vehicle to last 20 years. They're buying that vehicle to, you know, stimulate their senses temporarily, whereas you're your standing philosophy has always been build reliable vehicles for people that they can have great peace of mind in, you know, and, and that didn't necessarily mean having the latest and greatest tech and frills, right? That meant having a vehicle that wasn't going to have a bunch of things breaking or falling apart on you. And I personally am going to miss that moving forward. I know I'm not alone. You know, all this to say you had something special. You've always had something special, and that is the ability to build a vehicle and let it run long in the tooth, like we saw with the fifth generation Toyota 4Runner, the Tundra here, the 200 series Land Cruiser. You've been able to let them run for years upon years, right, with offering the same exact vehicle pretty much for a decade plus, while no other vehicle manufacturer could do that successfully. Think about that. You were able to sell the same Toyota 4Runner back in 2010 as you are selling here in 2024 and you're still compounding excellent sales figures. So I don't want this to come across as an angry message from a disgruntled Toyota enthusiast and right and I think unfortunately it's going to come across that way to some people no matter what but I want it to come across as you know really constructive feedback right I mean I do love your brand I love Toyota and I will continue to love Toyota. And I mean that. I'm going to continue to try these new platforms as they come out, the new Land Cruiser. I'm going to try that out and I'm going to be hopeful for it. But I just, I feel like the change that you guys have implemented recently just is not in alignment with what your core values have always been in the philosophy of Toyota Corporate at large. So it just feels like it was just too much at once. And it's just feels like you're kind of kicking your, 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 
enthusiasts of old to the wayside, unfortunately, just to satisfy like a new wave, a new generation of buyers who don't care so much about reliability and resale and simplicity and just that ultimate peace of mind that you have always offered in years past. Now, I understand there's going to be government pressures and government pushes of emission standards, new rules and regulations that you need to live within in order to continue business within the North American market. I understand that. And I think most Americans understand that, too. But I would just encourage you, don't let those rules and regulations and those additional stipulations serve as a detriment to the brand. Right? Don't let it force your hands so much where you have a new vehicle that doesn't feel like a Toyota. Right? And we're starting to see you make those changes in... People don't love it. People don't love that new Toyota Tundra. It's not just me. Take a look at any videos and look at the feedback that people are getting on them, right? And we're seeing that. If we're making that same shift across the lineup with a very similar hybridized platform across the board, that's not good. That's not good news for Americans. They don't love that. So don't let those government regulations and pushes and pressures dictate and serve as a detriment to the Toyota brand. So Toyota, I'm going to leave you with three words. Reliability, simplicity, and affordability. You've developed a huge fan base and a loyal fan base with a ton of enthusiasm around the brand because you've always stuck to those three words. Recently, we've deviated from those three, right? A couple of them in particular, I won't say which, a couple of them in particular we've really deviated from. And well, when we deviate from one or two of them, what is that ultimately gonna impact? That's gonna impact the resale values. And we're already starting to see that with the new generation of Tundras hidden lots with the new iForce Max it's not having the greatest resale value right out of the gate. And we're gonna continuously see that decline, unfortunately. And I don't wanna see it decline because, well, people will no longer buy a Toyota knowing like, hey, I can buy this without losing my rear end come sale time, that's gonna go out the window. So I encourage you, Toyota, let's get back to those core principles of reliability, simplicity, and affordability. All right, so I'll wrap up the video there. Hopefully I didn't ruffle too many feathers with it. I'm sure there'll be a couple of people upset about it, but it really is how I feel. And I'm, I'm confident in saying, I'm not alone on that. And, and I see your comments, I see all the feedback you guys provide me. You know, if, if you do feel this way, you know, please stick around the channel. Please consider liking and subscribing. Your support means a lot. And well, hopefully one day we may be a big enough channel to actually have a positive impact on our favorite vehicle manufacturer, Toyota.